Hey everybody, welcome to Effortless. I'm Spiegel, that's Piddle. Hello everyone. Literally right next to me this time. I am here in uh, Wisconsin visiting and uh, we are doing a show because that's what we do. And it's gonna be worse than ever. This is gonna be the worst show ever and, and we're, we're like super nervous for this show and I don't really know why. Uh, probably just because we have, feel like we really have to bring it. But this is going to be a super long show just to justify my trip out here. It took me about four hours on the plane, so we're going to try to do a four-hour show. And then like four hours in a car afterwards. Yeah, the car the, the car was the hard part, really. I mean, I didn't like the plane ride, but the drive down to Los Angeles from where I live, that was tough. I mean, I live in California. I, I you know, fly out. I took uh, the LAX to Chicago. If you've ever flown before, it's uh, not a great experience. And actually, uh, that was the first thing I wanted to talk about was my experience on the on this plane and in the airport. Have you ever, like, flown? You've flown places. I've flown plenty of places. Yeah. Like, how far have you gone? To the other side of the world, practically. Oh, okay. Well... Well, not quite. More like the other side of the ocean. So, anyway, it's not, it's not the best. It's... I mean, you show up at this airport, and it's basically just a madhouse. You're, you're on this shuttle bus, and you have to figure out where your terminal is because it doesn't say on your ticket. So I'm, I'm like, I'm panicking. I'm looking out the window. Where is this terminal that I need to stop at? So I finally find the terminal. I, I, I get off, no, no problems. Then you got to go through security. Now this is really fun because these, these NSA jerks, I mean, the, TSA. Yeah, TSA, excuse me. Uh, I always get the two mixed up. I wonder why. Um, the, the TSA people, they're really, they're not very nice. I, I asked the guy a simple question. He like almost yelled at me. It was it was pretty terrifying. I really liked your description of the TSA. I can't remember what I said now. Uh, something about the police. They're, they're the police if there is absolutely no care in the world. Oh yeah, it's like if the police didn't care about anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they did, they're not doing a great job. Um, I mean they did. I mean they're keeping us safe. I guess I I don't know. I, I don't want to get too political, but it, <laughs> I don't want to get political at all. But to me, the TSA is, it's the service they provide is negligible for the inconvenience of having to wait in a line. You had to take off your shoes in the line. I've never seen so many barefoot people in a public place in my life, um, except when I had like karate when I was a kid. Uh, so anyway, we'll get to the plane in just a second, but then we get to the, we get to the, um, the boarding area and like, there's just a bunch of like jaded, exhausted people waiting there. And it's, it's pretty fun to people watch. I don't know if you're into people watching at all. All the time. I used to not do it as much, but I do it a lot. I feel really bad when I do it, but I can't help it. And then I get super self-conscious uh, self and start wondering, wait, how often do people watch me? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I don't do it is because I'm always like, I'm the guy that's being watched. And uh, by the way, if any of you guys ever see me on my travels, feel free to come up and say hi. I don't do autographs or pictures, but you can say hi. That sounded pretty conceited, didn't it? Nah, it is what it is. Um, so that, then I got on the plane. Of course, of course, you know, the plane was like, my pass said, we're boarding at 8.25 a.m. So I got to the airport at like 6, because that's what the thing says. You're supposed to get there like two hours early. Now, this is my first time ever flying. So this was a unique thing to me. And I was like, two hours, that seems like a long time. Turns out it is a long time. Um, I could have gotten there probably half an hour and I would have gotten there on time and it wouldn't have been an issue because the plane didn't even board until like 45 minutes after it said it was going to. And the crazy thing was we weren't even late. The plane took off like on time and then we landed on time. So I just, the boarding pass is like super misleading, I guess. Uh, so I know this is a great way to like start off the show, but long travels but I mean, then when you got here we got pizza we did get pizza um th but the the plane ride was not great there wasn't any turbulence they said there might be some light turbulence i was actually okay going up and coming down like i didn't, i wasn't like too worried about it, anything i've never, like i said i never flown before but uh, it was a really unique experience it was really cool to like look out the window i had the window seat so i could like see all the clouds and everything that's I good i saw my future home in wyoming uh, as we flew over, so that was fun. Uh, it was really cramped. The people next to me didn't say a word to me the whole time, so that was great. They were watching The Hateful Eight on their tablet, so watch The Hateful did, Eight. Did you look over their shoulders the entire time? You're like, turn up, turn up the volume a little bit. They uh, they were they got their like headset on, and I was like, dang, I wish they had a triple splitter instead of a double splitter, because I would totally tap into that. I wanted uh. to, I wanted to get a movie for the way home, but unfortunately, I can't figure out how to trans. Uh, I feel like splitter. now everywhere I go, I need to bring earbuds. And, uh, yeah, the splitter. 
a splitter. So if I ever see somebody listening to something and it looks or it sounds like something interesting, they're really I can just out. be like, hey, can I listen to that too? Yeah. Not be awkward at all. <laughs> it might have been awkward if I'd asked them to listen to, <laughs> to, to watch The Hateful Eight with them. But The Hateful Eight is such a good movie that, uh, well, I wouldn't recommend. I haven't seen it yet. You guys are all like kids out there, so I wouldn't recommend you watch it. Uh, but I think it's really good. Um, so the plane landed and we didn't crash or anything. So that was good. And then we landed in Chicago. Piddle was really upset cause he couldn't give me a man hug. Uh, and then, um, yeah, we went and we had pizza. Uh, his, his significant other was there as well. Yep. Uh, and we just, we had a really nice time. Uh, do, are we allowed to say her name on the show? I don't know. Okay. Well, we won't just in case, just in case, maybe next show. Um, did I mention this is going to be like a super long episode? This is going to be like a three part episode. So possibly this so, is hopefully we, we don't know for sure yet but hopefully this will be effortless the trilogy yeah so we're kind of we're kind of getting a slow start just like uncharted 4 and we're we're really gonna uh take our time here because we, we want to make sure we cover everything we want to talk about and we got a lot of freaking stuff to talk about um i also yeah did, because we we should have recorded an episode right away like as soon as i got here but instead we waited and now we have a whole week of like stuff that piled up on us Including stuff that we hadn't talked about, because I think we recorded a week before you left. That's right. right. Yeah, that's right. And so, so then we had a whole week of content leading up to when you came, and then it took us another week. So yeah, we, we've played a lot. We've talked a lot. It is... There's been more news coming out. Yeah, I, I've, I've had a chance to sort my opinions on the NX, and we, we're going we're gonna to talk about... Let's just like run down. We, we did a lot of planning for today's show, but we're going to run down like a little bit what we're going to talk about later, just so you guys know, hey, this whole thing is worth listening to. We're going to post it over a couple of days so you like have time to catch up and stuff. But we're going to talk 52-52. You wouldn't believe how many games I beat this week, by the way. Uh, oh my goodness. I know. A and, lot of them are short. Yeah. yeah. We, we're, we're, we're cheaters to an extent, but... But they're really, some of them are good. Some of them are you know, not great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to talk about the games that aren't good because... We got some legendary ones this time. Um, uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, oh, the uh, the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare trailer. Um, Which finally dropped. That, that I mean, we all knew it was coming. Yeah. Um, and well, I can't wait to... I got some impressions. We got uh, some impressions. We're going to talk about Nintendo's E3 plans, which still just sort of blow my... I, I'm just so they, surprised. They announced this a couple of hours ago. And I'll just tell you now. Nintendo is only going to be showing one game at E3 this year, and we knew there was only going to be one playable game, but now they're only showing one game, so we'll talk about that. Uh, we got more more games. Uh, we're going to talk about Rare as a company because um, we've been playing we've been playing Rare Replay all week. Yeah, just because that's the way it ended up. Uh, I don't know how that ended up happening. I don't know because you wanted to play Perfect Dark, and then we just kind of stayed on Rare Replay. Uh, especially since like I have Star Fox Zero, and so is your chance to play Star Fox Zero. I'm going to play, I, I did play a little Star Fox Zero. I'm going to talk about my impressions, um, just as a spoiler, they're not too different from his. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the Xbox One, um, because honestly, I know we- Well, we've spent all week we talk enjoying about, the Xbox One. We talk about the Xbox One all the time on this show, because we hate it so much, but I think today's going to be like our big blowout, like final complaint Xbox One show. Final, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sure we can get Until an update stuff. comes out that bricks the entire system. Well, your system's going to be bricked soon once your controller gets sent back to Microsoft. Oh, gosh. Inso yeah, don't go over that. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, then, uh, They'll we, track me down. Finally, we're going to end the last part of the episode with a game that we came that I came up with, and we're just going to like do a little game. I wanted to talk about my impressions of the state, but I don't really have as much to say as I thought I was going to. I really like it out here. It's, it's, really, it's a nice area. It's way better than California because the state tax is like less, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, yeah, and th there's a really nice basketball court. We've been playing a lot of basketball. We went to a Brewers game in Milwaukee. I know all my all of our fans like really care about sports, but our fans, I don't know. You, we just need to talk about sports I don't know games. If... What if we only talked about sports games? That's what this show became. It became the sports game show. All we would play is MLB the show. NBA 2K whatever and NFL 2K5 and <laughs> NFL 2K5. That's it, yeah. just just gloss over uh Madden completely yeah um which did I did I I think I forgot to include NFL 2K5 didn't I we? believe I need to actually talk about all that right this well week. So we'll talk about that in a little oh, bit oh man uh in fact we're gonna do our 52 52 right now this the whole first part of this episode is gonna be 52 52 so if you haven't already turned off this show 
which this show is kind of for effortless diehards, not going to lie. We spent the first 10 minutes of it talking about absolutely nothing. So here we go. Going to talk about some games. Um, which one do you want to lead off with? We're looking at a list. I We have a list. So I'll talk. I already teased last week or our last episode a couple of games uh, that I gave scores for. But we just I just didn't have time to go yeah, over it. Yeah, we didn't have time to talk about it. That Those games were Super Punch-Out and Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Uh, and then, yeah, I realized that I completely forgot to talk about NFL 2K5. Uh, so, set Super Punch-Out. It's a sports game. It's a sports game. Because it's boxing. <laughs> it's a boxing game. Yeah. It's it's a lot different from the original Punch-Out. Uh, just because you can... I feel like the controls are a lot different. The anim- The characters that you fight are a lot different. I feel like it's not nearly as hard or unforgiving as the original Punch-Out. The format of the fights is closer to the... There's there's no rounds anymore. It's just three minutes of fighting, and you either win by knockout or you lose. You There's no win by decision, which I think that sort of sucks. I'd love to see a win by decision. But they also added a lot to Super Punch-Out in terms of how the Super works. Uh, rather than getting stars by punching your opponent at certain times, as you punch your opponent and make blows, you build up a special bar. And uh, that'll that'll help make your, I think it makes all your punches a little bit stronger, a little bit quicker. Uh, and then you can pretty much do a super punch any time. Mm-hmm. And there's two types. There's like the hook, where you're doing a strong hook, or you're doing like super quick jabs with them. Usually the hook is more useful. There's, if you time your punches correctly on enemies this time, you can actually cause what's called a dizzy effect. And that, so it's not all about rhythm in this game, basically. Is what I'm there, there is a lot of rhythm, rhythm to it too, because like to get the dizzies, uh, to make a enemy get dizzy, you have to hit them at very specific times. You have to touch fuzzy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, that was um, a bad one. That was really bad. And when you do get a dizzy, they're 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 pretty much staggered, and you can knock them down really easily and get a not, a, a knockout rather than generally. Uh, technical knockout where you knock them down three times. So that's like the special way to get a knockout in this mm-hmm. game is to actually get the opponents into a dizzy effect. Um, the speed runs for this game are completely different from the original punch out too, because whereas the original punch out it could still take like two minutes of in game time to knock down an opponent. This one I've seen like the really even the top enemies in this game or fighters in this game, you can bring down in like 15 seconds if, you absolute, if you're like perfect with everything and end up dizzying them right away. Is this one of those games that, they, that you can do for something like Awesome Games Done Quick? Yes. Okay. Actually, I highly suggest watching the AGDQ I'm gonna content watch, on it. I'm going to watch a lot more of those next year because I, I, I recently I played through Metroid Prime like five times and I tried to beat my score every time. And then uh, I was like, you know, I should watch like speed runs of this game, trying to learn some tricks and... It's crazy what they can do. I love speedruns, and you know. Uh, so I know I know a lot of people don't like Super Punch Out compared to the first one. Mm-hmm. The style is definitely different, but for whatever reason, I really liked the format of it. Uh, I liked the c- characters of it. Some of them are aren't even really boxers, and I think a lot of people didn't like that too. Is they had like one of one of them uses a weapon, or a couple of them use weapons. That's kind of weird. It's more goofy, I guess. Feels it almost feels a little bit more Nintendo like. Um, Nintendo was starting to develop their whole oh we're Nintendo we do things differently, and that that was a Super Nintendo game right? Yeah, 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 it was it was a Super Nintendo game. So I ended up giving it a four out of five I believe. Uh, yeah, I gave it a four out of five. Great game. Uh, I re- I really highly suggest it. Whether whether or not you like the original well, Punch Out, what was the even main... if you didn't like the original Punch Out, because I feel like this one's a lot more forgiving. I was gonna say, what's the main thing that made it better than the first Punch yeah, Out? Yeah, because I tried Punch Out, I just I couldn't get into it. It's like this is too hard. I think Super Punch Out is a lot more forgiving, and that's one of the things that that's held against it is the high the harder bosses are a lot easier. But oh, big deal! I I, I don't so really what? I don't really think it really held it back that much. Uh, I like I like the gimmicks for some of the bosses. Yeah. I mean, we've seen what intense difficulty can do to a game. We'll talk about yes. that. We'll talk we'll about talk that, about that later. We did uh, we did play a little bit of. Uh, we should talk about some games that we played this week, but we didn't really finish. 
by the way we should do that like at the end of this part of the episode perfect yeah let's do that um so assassin's creed 4 black flag oh I yeah also black played. flag that's right i, I know you're really yeah, disappointed mr ubisoft me. boycott himself decided to play assassin's creed black flag this week well part of the reason i boycotted ubisoft in the first place is because of assassin's creed uh and it was i got my xbox one bundle with assassin's creed black flag and assassin's creed unity expecting unity to be good at this time i did not do my research so really the blame is on me for not doing my research but unity was terrible i never really touched black flag that much i touched it for maybe 15 minutes i, ba I barely installed it so i actually went back started to play black flag and i really liked it and i feel really bad about it i feel terrible you know that i actually like it's okay to like a game made by a company that you don't like even in a series that you don't like I, I think it's totally fine i just think you have to be able to explain why it's better and then why you don't like the other games in comparison to it i think in terms of mixing up the gameplay it does a really good job because you have like the pirate parts of the game mm -hmm. where yeah you're commandeering your ship and sailing around uh i think the game looks absolutely fantastic even now even on xbox one even on xbox wow. one i thought it looked really good uh the did it, did it look better than halo uh remastered yes way better um i'd actually be curious to see what it looked like on last gen consoles so yeah there's a lot to do as a, a pirate there's a lot to do as an assassin uh i still i'm not the biggest fan of the assassin stuff the climbing in the games frustrates me a lot of the time it's but, not as refined as it is in a game like uncharted where you're yeah it's yeah. not but i think that's why i liked black flag so much because it wasn't it wasn't like that was the only thing i was yeah. doing it, it was constantly like okay go here do a little assassinating and then yeah, assassinating assassinating <laughs> assassinating oh that's good um and then hop on your ship and you know shoot down some ships and plunder them and board the board them and kill the captains uh it sounds like it mixes it up a lot more than than the other assassins it creatures. really does and i think i think that's the reason i really liked it uh there were some moments where it sort of introduced new gameplay concepts where even if the controls a lot of the controls in this game weren't the greatest but that's sort of a, a consequence of trying to have more detailed animations yeah. i guess but even later in the game, it sort of surprised me with some of the scenarios that it presented. And I really like that. And yeah, it's hard to say that I liked it so much. It's a very un-Ubisoft game, based because on what you told me. It, 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 keep, it keeps introducing new concepts. Ubisoft doesn't do that. You know, they, they made a game that, um, that has an interesting uh, uh, mechanic that is not just overly repetitive. Yes, and Ubisoft doesn't do that, so I think I think you're justified in liking this game. There were a lot of, I mean, there's it's still an, a typical Ubisoft open world game where it's a ton of collectibles on the map, just a ridiculous amount of collectibles. And a lot of times, I found I found myself getting the collectibles. And I'm like, why am I doing this? I get nothing out of this. Yeah, there's nothing for me do to. Do you even get an achievement? I fell in love with achievements this week. Oh, uh, really yeah, I believe you get achievements. For, you have to. I'm, I'm almost certain you get achievements for collecting everything I mean, in the game. You don't get achievements for collecting everything in Banjo Tooie, which I found out. That's a good thing. <laughs> I feel like we're, we're we're reading way too much like late into later in this show, but we'll we'll, we'll yeah. talk about that stuff later. Uh, so I don't I don't know if there's really anything else to say other than at points I I realized I was just like collecting stuff on a bike. I realized that there's no point for me to do this because I'm not gonna collect everything. This isn't a game where I want to do absolute yeah. uncover right everything right leave no stone unturned so to say um but with that said oh yeah the story the story was pretty bad too well it's assassin's creed so <laughs> it, it was it was really bad and oh yeah and the way that the game the games all of them sort of go to present day settings and try to tell a story through present day settings i just i don't like it i think it it's a little awkward I think it really ruins the cohesiveness that any story could tell. Do you feel like it hurts the world building at all? Or yeah. Do you, okay. In, in a like because it's not immersive, you don't feel like you're really part of this world. You feel like you're it would be like I'm I'm going along playing the being an assassin, being a pirate, and really getting into it, and then all of a sudden I finish a main story, 
I get far enough in a main story where now it cut, pulls me out and it's like, oh, well, now we're going to be back mm-hmm. into, you're back in an office talking to people. And it, it tries to be really cool and covert and really build on the world. It just, for whatever reason, for me, it falls flat. Maybe because I just haven't been with the series since the beginning. Maybe I think that's probably it. A lot of people, a lot of like longtime fans of the series, they they live for that stuff. Like I see people talking about that all the time. So that was Black Flag. I give it a four out of five. Four out of five. And for then, a Ubisoft game. For a Ubisoft. Game. I don't know how I feel about that. There's I I've started to put time in Unity, as you know. I know you did start to play Unity. I, I, it's nowhere near, quick, quick impressions. It's nowhere near as good as Black Flag. Okay. Nowhere near as good. But it looks really good. Do you think you might try Syndicate when the price gets lower? I hear Syndicate's supposed to be good. I'm considering or it. Or at least decent. I'm really considering it. Um, I think I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research as far as what they added to Syndicate because like I s I played Assassin's Creed in three in the past. That and I've tried Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed was terrible. I haven't played two or Revelations, with which a lot of people say are good. Yeah, but I played three. Three got was sort of cool, but got really boring really quick. Um, Black Flag was good, yeah, and Unity. Eh, I don't know. I think it just needs more than just the sneak around and then collect everything. Well, they're taking a year off. Maybe they'll develop something really unique next year. For Hopefully, next year's Assassin's Creed. You know, like, we're taking a year off. The game's just going to come out in March instead of in November or October <laughs> whenever it came out. Um, well, I'd rather see two every three years than one every year. One every Or two every year if you're Rogue and Unity. Anyway. Uh, NFL which... 2K5. Oh, you want to do that one right now? Real quick, NFL 2K5. And no one really wants to hear about it, so just try to... Oh, man. You know what? For any of you who are sports fans, I played NFL 2K5 because, as we know... The Madden series has exclusive rights over the NFL now. And they have for 10 years. And 10 it's, very Which is years. ridiculous. And they just renewed it again recently, too. It was like a couple years ago. I'm so infuriated with the NFL. EA owns the NFL, which is one of my favorite sports, for 10 more years. I just can't even deal with that. It's... I haven't played the newest Madden yet, but you've said it's very similar, right? Well, I played Madden 15. I didn't play 16. I played like a demo of 16. I okay. felt... I felt like they added some stuff that was pretty unique and interesting, but, like, it's just, like, it's window dressing, you know? Under the hood, the game is still a complete disaster. Like, all the stuff, like I said, all the stuff on the surface, all the stuff you would see in a demo or a beta or just, like, a little quick snapshot of the game, that's all good. Even the commentary sounds all right when you hear it the first time in Madden, but after a couple games, it just, it really starts to wear on you, and you start to notice... Hey, how come my player flew up into the air after that play? <laughs> Stuff you didn't notice the first time. Um, and Madden I- animations are so long. An- the animations of Madden just like throw you off all the time. And I'll say one thing about NFL 2K5. I think it's incredible that, how good the animations the are. The animations, game. I don't think there's been a single time where I've looked at the animations and just been like, what? Yeah, <laughs> And that, that happens every time I play a Madden game. Uh, the, more re- the most recent Madden game I've played for reference is Madden 25. Which I think that was 2013. So I don't 14, know. 14. 14? Yeah. So pretty much just two years ago was the last time I was in, in it. And yeah. Uh, it's, terrible game. It's incredible. Game. Let, let's just do it this way. Because I played 2K5 as well. I didn't play enough of it to really give you like a full score or anything. But I just, I went through it. I didn't really care for it as much. It felt incredibly dated. But it still was impressive to me how much it did better than Madden 15. Uh, a, a, 10 right. year, a 10 year old game. Uh, for one thing, the Eagles are actually good in it. Um, I'm not going to be an Eagles fan anymore, though. So, anyway. I, it took me a while to get into it. I'll say I, I turned up the difficulty right away. And, like, the first few games, I'm I'm trying to do the passing and everything. And I'm just terrible yeah, at it. it was I know really you have hard, not gotten the hang of it. really hard to get adjusted to it um, after playing Madden for so many years. And also running. Like, I, I was averaging, like, two yards a carry, yeah. which is ve- very bad if you play sports games. And... It took a while for me to get used to it, but when I got really used to it, I got almost too good. Yeah, you were, you were, your numbers were way too unrealistic by the end, which is the other thing I don't like in yeah. sports games. I, I'm like, I'm really into the the realism of sports. Uh, I like, I like stats. I like all that stuff. And when I get a sports game that gives me unrealistic stats, I just, I check out. So it wasn't perfect, but it was way better than my last experience with Madden. It is one of the actually. 
probably in terms of football games go, it's probably the best football game in terms of actually that I've played. Gameplay, I think it probably is like yeah. right up there, especially because it's polished. You know, it is. That's my big thing with Madden, and I said this when we when I reviewed it last year, is that Madden 15 is just a complete mess under the hood, and I don't like that. Um, so that's about it. Yeah, let's not, uh, what's your score? My score for it is a four out of five. Yeah, so sorry, non-sports people that you had to listen it's, to, you had to listen, oh, two minutes of sports talk. Oh, I don't, wait, I don't. turn the episode off. <laughs> I don't think there's a perfect, uh, football game that exists yet. It's a really complicated thing because you gotta render 22 guys plus refs on the field. Yeah, all doing, you have like, to get all of that right, and it's yeah. so much, so what they did with 2K5 is incredible. Yeah. Uh, part of me wants to update the rosters for it it's a lot and of figure out sliders that are actually correct. Yeah. But that's all. Four out of five. Um, yeah. All right. So to reward the people that listened to that, let's do Star Fox Zero. I want to talk. <laughs> so the first thing I did after I, I got here was um, I, I just, you know, set up my stuff and I, you know, got comfortable and everything. And then it was just like, okay, time to play Star Fox Zero. And I was like, oh, I wasn't ready for this. And, um, you know, the controller, the gamepad's forced into my hands, and, I'm, and the game boots up, and I'm forced to start playing it. Now, we we covered on this show the control scheme and how it's very close to objectively poorly designed. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can... I think the way it's introduced is objectively poorly. Like, terrible. Objectively, yeah. the way that they, they're introducing a brand new control scheme yeah. to people is terrible. They I mean, are throwing so... you in the midst of battle right away essentially well, there was a tutorial and it was... <laughs> i just rolled my eyes but you can't see that yeah. i mean it was it was kind of helpful i i learned kind of what i was doing but unfortunately it's just not enough like you really need like an hour or two with these controls before you can actually get it and i mean you saw me flying i was I, i'm not good at shooting things anyway as we'll talk about later but it's it was really unbelievable how i would be looking at the screen and I would be aiming the target reticle, and I couldn't hit anything. And I was like, why can't I hit anything? It's like, because you had to look at the gamepad for more accurate aiming. I'm like, why would they do something that and this, stupid? That's, a, that's exactly what I told you, where how it was in the N Nintendo 64 version, it was it was like that. You aimed on the screen, and your reticle on the screen was accurate. Right. And now you have this, they, in they intentionally made it worse for because, this game. To in fit it in with the gimmick that they were trying to set up, yeah. right? And it it's we've already covered this and i'm going to talk about it again it just it baffles me that they thought this was a good use of the gamepad almost like it, it almost isn't a good use of the gamepad because it's just so not it's like awkward i don't it is i don't really want to do this you know when when i've got when i got the gamepad i'm looking at the screen and i I'm, I'm like looking back and forth. i don't want to play a star fox game that way and maybe that's my own fault for like having expectations, but it's... well, we've dis we've discussed this a lot this week, and we've we've pretty much come to the conclusion that we're not saying that this is a bad game. No, not at all. We we both see a great game. Yes. there that exists. In thirty minutes, I was like, this game is really well polished. It looks really good. It captured the feel of Star Fox perfectly, but it is just ruined by this control scheme that I don't think anybody really wanted. Right? I don't think a lot of people want it. I think. I do think there are people who have taken to it and will Chris. love this game. And I'll be honest, for you people out there, you are lucky. You are very fortunate. I am envious of you. Yes. Because I want, I really want to enjoy this game. And I was telling myself the whole time that I, it's a great game. It's just like after I beat it several times and I, yeah, I put 10 hours you into it. You put 10 just... hours into the game and you still didn't get the controls. I think that's super telling and just... It wasn't a great design decision to force these controls on the player. And yeah. it's, un it's unfortunate because this is going to be the end. We This is really interesting. This is going to be the end of the Star Fox franchise, right? It sold 250,000 copies on day one. It sold and terribly. Then the, then the reviews came out. It's like, oh, this game isn't great. And who's going to buy it now? Yeah, we, we've, had is... a, we've had a chance to wait and see what the fir first week of sales were. And they're not good. No, 250,000 first week. That's not. That's nothing. For a triple-A a Nintendo IP like Star Fox, I mean, every Star Fox game, with the exception of uh, Command, has sold over a million. This game's not going to hit a million. This There's... game this game will be lucky to hit three quarters of a million. 
lucky. They're really going to have to do some work in the marketing department, which they've done. I think the commercials are really good for yeah. whatever that's worth. They, I just, I don't know if it can overcome this stigma that it now has of you better be ready for some nasty controls because that's what it offers. It's just a disappointment. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I was really, I mean, I don't know what I, I was expecting to be disappointed and then I was disappointed. So I guess, I guess it met my expectations. So uh, there, I don't know. I can't give it a score because I didn't play enough of it, but I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Along the lines of Star Fox, though, good segue, right? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I also I also finally beat Star Fox Guard. I didn't do all the extra missions. I did, like, 15 of them. I, and here, here are my impressions of Star Fox Guard. It's a really neat concept where you ha- control 12 different cameras and you're trying to shoot things. It's sort of ha- like it has that Five Nights at Freddy's feel, but you actually can take things out. Am I dating myself? It's by, not just jump scares. Am I dating myself by saying that I don't even think of Five Nights at Freddy's when I think of camera games? I think of Night Trap on Sega CD. That's that's just no what I problem. Think of. Sorry, kids. I don't even know what Five Nights at Freddy's is. Um, I really don't. And I told you it was, I feel like it's the definition of a really boring game with great mechanics, <laughs> like great gameplay mechanics. It's constantly introducing new things to you as you play it, uh, new scenarios, all these different robot types that you have to defeat to protect the base and layouts of uh, the the mazes that the robots are, are coming, coming through in order yeah. to get to the center of the maze. It's just, it, it was just so boring. I really had to, <laughs> I had to force myself to beat it because I probably played about 10 levels and I was like, okay, I'm done with this. Yeah. But... I was, for whatever reason, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to power my way through it. I'm going to beat it. So yeah. maybe for somebody who really likes it for whatever reason, what, it's going to be great. You know what this game should have been? It should have been on Nintendo Land, right? Yeah. It should have been one of those like launch Nintendo Land games that showed off the gamepad. It could have been like, um, instead of that weird Ninja Castle one, like they could have done that and people would have been really into it. It would have been one of those games that... Like on the commercials, you're playing with your family and they're all shouting instructions at you. Like they could have easily pitched that for Nintendo Land, but it just came too late. And I don't really see the relevance of it now uh, as a as a standalone product or something that you would even buy. Um, it's just a bonus that kind of, that came with Star Fox Zero. I think they handled it the right way for what it's worth. Yeah, they probably did the best job they could have with it. Yeah. So with that said, I feel bad giving it a three out of five, but it's it's. It's one of those games where we, yeah. we talked about. I, I sort of feel like I should give it a three and a half out of five, but when it comes down to it, I would never give this game a four. Yeah. So it's a three out of five for me. And you know, it's there, there's there's different types of threes, right? Like there's hard threes, like this game was mediocre, and then there's threes like there's just not much here. It's not like a bad thing. Yeah. It's just and then there's Star Fox Zero threes where if you don't like the controls, it's going to be a two, and if it's you like the controls, it's going to be a four. Yep. So so there you go. Uh, and then we can finally oh, start yes! talking about so games excited. that we played. So, which one do you want to start with? We're going to talk about the games that we've played since Spiegel has come here. There you go. And I'd like to start with an old game. How did I even end up wanting to play this in the first place? <laughs> so I, I work at a video game store, and uh, we we get all of our product from you know those those national like warehouse type places. That uh, they they just send out games that uh, they, like the company pays for them and then you sell them at like a marked up value. All right. Um, so I did a product request uh, for like a bunch of like old obscure uh, Wii, PS3, and 360 games because we were we were running low on stock. Um, and so I did a request for like these old weird games. And along my quest, I started looking for just weird obscure Wii and DS games that I'd never heard of because I find that stuff really interesting. Uh, especially the good ones, like the the, ge- the hidden gems in the Wii collection that were just buried under mountains of crap, and I like just, Ninja Bread Man, right? Like Ninja Bread Man, and this is a really long intro because I find it really interesting. I found like the Dog Island and like Red Steel Two and all these games that you probably never remember or heard of, um, but the one that I found that I thought was really interesting was the Oregon Trail on Wii, and uh, that's right, and it was a game that didn't really look all that great. And in fact, it didn't look good at all. But, it, but it, I, I remember it caught your attention because it had like a really good review or something. I think we saw it had like a nine yeah, or had, something no, like had, that. It had, or an eight, close. it had an eight on IGN. Um, which I was like, what the heck? But 
And then we looked at video and, oh man. It just looks like crap. I don't know how this got an eight. But anyway, uh, so I, the reason it caught my attention in the first place was because it was the Oregon Trail, which is a game that has routinely appeared on super obscure top 100 games of all time lists when people are just trying to be edgy yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. So I'm like, you know what? Let's play. And you said you, said you wanted to play the Oregon Trail now because I mentioned it and... I'm just like, okay, let's play the Oregon Trail. So I wasn't like super excited about it or anything, but I just got so into this. So I looked up uh, Oregon Trail and the, found that I could play it on archive.org. You should all go stop the show. Just don't even listen to what we have to say. I'm just going to say this right now. Go play the Oregon Trail Deluxe. It is... Yes. We didn't play the original Oregon Trail. We played Oregon Trail Deluxe, which yeah. was still like came out in 1990 well, I think yeah, it's it was a, it's the same type of thing I mean, it's, so it's it, essentially the same game yeah. just a little bit more easy on the eyes yes i'd say and probably a few fewer snake bites so we created we played twice and i didn't even want to do the second time <laughs> through and i was probably even more into it the second time we played through it uh, uh keep in mind this is not a co-op game we were just, i was basically just watching and advising him as he played it but I counted it as part of my 5252 as well because I arguably was just as equal of a part of, of this as he was. And I it's weird because the Oregon Trail, if you don't know, you are it's sort of an education edutainment game. Edutainment, yeah. If as you they call if you it. grew up uh, when we did, um, you know, older older people. You, you likely had this on your school computers. Yeah, you probably remember this game. I don't this was like right after my time, but uh, right before my time. But um, we so we didn't have this. But I had heard of it because like the older kids always talked about the Oregon Trail. And you actually you played it when you were a kid, right? I played it when I was a kid. So I, you, I I think I actually played this specific version. So a lot of you guys listening to this show right now, you probably never. I don't know. You may have not have even heard of it, but it's an it's an educational game, quote unquote educational, because I don't remember anything educational about it. But basically, what you're a settler from Missouri, and you have to take this wagon trail all the way across the country. Yeah, it uh, takes place during the 1800s. Yes, uh, during the like the gold rush move and all that stuff. Um, so you have to like decide, oh, you know, I want to bring this many oxen and this this many pounds of food and this many bullets and this many sets of clothes, and, and th these, you just, this many pieces to fix my uh, wagon yeah, cart if it breaks down if it forever. Burns down, yeah. yeah, or if it sinks in the river, uh, that's only two and a half feet deep. Yeah. Um, so. Basically, it's just like that. You you go over the course of six months. It it goes pretty quickly. Uh, you stop in towns. You, ter you terrible things happen to you along the way. It, it it yeah. It's sort of um. You have to the educational part of it is sort of figuring out how much of everything you need to take. You're given advice, but I think it's sort of like the math is up to you as a kid. Right. Right. Um. And I should we should say this. This is a text based game. It's not like an action game. So everyone, calm down. It's, yeah. I mean. It's somehow it still managed to be almost more engaging than anything else I've played this year. You get to pick like how early you leave right. in the year, how late you leave in the year. You don't want to leave too early because the winter is still kind of going. The yeah, the going. winter's still. But if you going. leave too late, you're going to become the freaking Donner Party out there in uh, in, in Will uh, Willamette or whatever it is. Like as you go over the Rocky Mountains, and you're just gonna get held up in all the snow, and you're just gonna all die out. Yeah, there. You, there's no way you're gonna get across the Rockies. We still, we still haven't played making like the worst decisions possible. We have, we have not. We were really good at this game, by the way. And the but, first time, well, the first time no, you the died. First time was that I died. <laughs> yeah. So you name your party, and I was in the party, and I died like immediately. But there was nothing we could do. I got bit by a snake and died. It wasn't like, <laughs> oh, Shay's sick from a snake bite. It's Shay got bit by a snake and died. And then uh, you know, it's such it's a very random game in a lot of ways. Uh, you think that would diminish the enjoyment, but it really yeah. doesn't. It really doesn't. You can choose like how hard you're gonna push to get to travel, like how how far you're gonna try to push every day. Uh, you can hunt for animals and H hunting yeah. is fun. H hunting is everything. <laughs> yeah, it, just hunt a lot. You'll be fine. You can even be a farmer and you just go hunting. Oh, be that's another thing. You get to decide like what your class is before you leave. Yeah. That, that's like the choosing the difficulty level. If you're a doctor or a banker, like you have more money to work with. If you're a farmer, they give you less. So it's we were we're both big Ron Paul fans. So we oh I told you we didn't <laughs> want to get political. Ah oh too bad. Well too late we were, um and so our first round through, we had him as our leader. 
Yeah, he was a doc- <laughs> doctor, Ron Paul. And he was a doctor. And the doctor is one of the easier difficulties. So Apparently, we made, yeah. Even though we died, we lost two people. Yeah, the first we had song. more deaths in the first one when we played the easier difficulty. But... Uh, and then we played the harder difficulty the second time through as a farmer. Yes. Everybody yeah. made it through. We used ZB Network. A lot of ZBN people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, nobody died, but frickin' Nick kept getting cholera and, like, all these diseases. <laughs> kept getting bit by a snake. Yeah. The- oh my gosh, QJ got bit by so many snakes on our first run. It was ridiculous how many snakes she got bit it's by. It's really hard to describe what makes the Oregon Trail so good because it's it's a weird game in terms of you're not in constant control. The only thing you really have control over is hunting. Um... You're really just trying to trade to survive. Right. Oh, it's screwing all the locals is fun too. Yeah. Like you like at one point we traded fifteen dollars for an ox, and then we were trying to trade like for fifteen more dollars, and they're like, I'll give you an ox for fifty or I don't know, something like that. So you can you can really take advantage of people in the game, which we tried not to do. We set up like some yeah. house rules, but we didn't we didn't like write everything down and Yeah. We yeah. we just paid attention and we took some risks with our trade and yeah. the, and those risks ended up paying off i think i think it's safe to say that we got lucky a little bit during the second run i'd like maybe we can do one more but the the main point we're trying to drive home with this game is a game i I don't feel like needs to be super complicated or super you know complex or long or long even because we did this probably in like an hour and a half per per session right yeah we we played twice through probably took us yeah and two and a half three hours it was just a super engaging experience and i i just can't believe how much fun we had with this game this little game on the Apple II computer uh, from 1990. Well, 1990 for the Deluxe. 82 was the original one. But you guys can all go play the Oregon Trail right now. And if we haven't sold you on it yet, just go like look at a video or something. Archive.org. This game really, look it up. This game really, I think, does belong on those top 100 lists. Yeah. I, it's very unique. It, there's nothing else like this that I can think of. What would you score it? I'd give it a five, no question. I think it's, again, I think it's one of the best games I've played this year. I think it's the best game I've played last year, maybe. It's the best game I've played this year. It's, yeah. it's a five for me as well. And, and how, how ridiculous is that, that a 26-year-old game is better than anything that came out this year? <laughs> a 26-year-old so, educational let game. The, let that be a lesson to you kids out there. Newer isn't always better. And that, that means you, teens, react to the original Super Nintendo Doom, which is a video we watched and it made me angry. <laughs> what uh, about Super Metroid? That one, I, there. Were, if you watch the React videos at all, um, they they do like they react to old video games, and it's funny to watch these kids struggle through them and be like, and but you also get to pick up all the really unique uh, Nintendo e type game design things that these companies do to to make the game easier the, for first time players. That's really cool to see. Anyway, got off topic a little bit there, but we have one more game, and then we're gonna end this part of the show. We're gonna go get food, and you guys can go play Oregon Trail while you wait for the new episode to be posted. Yeah, and that game is Halo Combat Evolved, the what? game that came out in 2001. It was a launch title for the Xbox. First time you've played it. This is my first time ever playing a Halo game. And Technically, it was Combat Evolved Anniversary, but well, yeah, but but we chose to play. Okay, so let me just start with this: Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary on Xbox 360 is a piece of crap. It looks horrible. And you think, how could they make an HD re- remaster look bad? Well, they somehow managed to do it. And if you've ever played Halo, which I'm sure a lot of you have, um, it, it's a game that is very simple, but relies on very obvious, I would say, visual cues to help you know where to go. Yeah. Considering a lot of the environments are incredibly repetitive. And I will be comparing this game a lot to Metroid Prime, I think, in the future. Very similar type of games. Uh, not as much exploration in Halo, but I, I can see, you know, why so many people said that Metroid Prime took ideas from Halo because it probably did. Um, you know, it's it's an action adventure game. It's a first person shooter, much more than it is an adventure. But it, all the things that we did during the game, I, I thought, wow, this is really unique. All the gameplay was it was really tight. Um, I just it's hard for me to put into words when I find a game that I play for the first time that I've always heard is great, but then I actually see it for myself and I experience it and I know that it's great. I don't, so, know, I don't know how to put it into words, really. For this let word. me ask, or let me put it this way, and I guess ask a question. What did you think of the Halo series before you played this game? I thought it was one of those things that everybody loved because it was a shooter and it was like it was just like every other generic shooter out there, but like it had a character, that had a face that you could put to it. Master Chief, he's such a badass. But like... It's so much more than that. 
it's got a really unique story yeah, that well, I, I didn't see that story coming. It like kind of blindsided me. I was like, oh man, I didn't know that it was like the covenant and some other stuff like went down. Like they, they don't focus on that when they're marketing this game. So that was all I knew about it. And then the story came out and kind of just blindsided. That's me. actually sort of cool that you never really knew about that whole other aspect of the right. game. A lot of people remember when they when this game first came out, they did not like that other aspect. A lot of the fans of this series really like the Covenant, and I, I'm one of those fans. I prefer the Covenant uh -huh. and well, fighting the Covenant. It's because it's like it's, it did that Uncharted thing where it became Resident Evil Four at the end of the game. But you know, I'm I'm like okay with it. Yeah, just but the gameplay gets mixed up by that added element. Too. Oh yeah, well it's really interesting, like all the different things you can do in a first person shooter if you just develop it. If well. you actually try. Yeah, if you actually try, it to make doesn't a have game. to be just shooting humans yeah it's so much more than that like you got you got all these different kinds of vehicles that are like that have all these different control schemes and by the way i suck at first person shooters and uh piddle found that out like firsthand uh yeah playing this game we, we played it co-op um this was a replay for him obviously my first time um it was it was it was really funny because the the main mechanic in this game is if you die you just if your other guy's still alive you come back you don't have to restart the mission as long as you can find a safe respawn point well, oftentimes I would just have like no health, so I would just go ahead and I would just scout out an area and just keep running and killing as much as I could and kind of clean it up for him. So it was a really unique way to play it. I think I'd like to play a single player uh, Halo at some point. I'll probably go through and play it again at some point in the future because I really liked this game. Only other question I have regarding uh, Halo Combat Evolved is how do you feel about the series going forward? Like what, what do you want to see from okay. the series going forward and... Do you anticipate playing the rest of the series? I think it's a certainty that I'm going to play at least the main series ones, um, just to see where they kind of take it. I know Halo Four and Five, excuse me, were not particularly well received, um, but I'm interested to see where they take. I, I don't really, I'm not good at, you know, forecasting. Oh, this is what I want to see happen next, and I want to see this type of advancement. Um, there's not really a lot I can request of the series at this point, so I'm just sort of Bungie. I'm at your. Uh, your mercy, I guess. I mean, you already made the game, but uh, just just do whatever you want. I'm sure I'll enjoy it if it's in the same type of vein, as long as they can iterate it on a meaningful way and it doesn't just feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. So Good. That, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm going to buy... I, I can't believe I'm saying this. I cannot believe I'm saying this. I'm going to buy a month of Xbox Live so I can play co-op Halo 2 with Pedal when I get back to, uh, to California. Oh my goodness. And I might even buy a headset. So watch out, world. Spiegel's going online. Actually, you're going to get a headset as a going home gift. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I already have an extra one. Oh, well, <laughs> boy. So, I, boy. You, do, I, you just get leftovers. How thoughtful. I did. Uh, oh, I should mention, I bought you a, uh, not a housewarming gift, but a gift for hosting me. I bought him a Pokemon X. Uh, we went to a local GameStop. I went in. Uh, bought Pokemon X for him, and he's gonna hopefully give impressions on Pokemon X soon because it's the first, it's the first uh, like newer Pokemon game you've played, right? I, I'm actually already impressed by the the visual presentation and the graphics of it. It's really impressive, right? Like the first time they showed it, I was like, wow. So they could have done this on DS, but they didn't. It's weird because all the uh, videos that I had seen before online did nothing to impress me. You can't look but... at 3DS videos and expect to be like blown away by it but like compared to everything else i've played on 3ds it looks fantastic the art design is is top notch pokemon has some of the best i think character design uh artists that that are in the gaming industry they can create this environment and these main characters that all look they all look very unique and they've all got their own special features and it's a, they have 700 plus Pokemon, and not a single one of them really look identical or even close to any other one. Uh, and and this game does a great job with the new Pokemon too, I think. Well, I'll get around to it. Yes, hopefully I've got soon. a lot of other games to play. Uh, we haven't even talked. We have about not even scratched the surface, everybody. Thank you for listening to this yeah. segment of Effortless. Uh, we hit right about the target that I thought we were gonna. Hit. Actually, oh man, I feel like. There's one more game that we have played, but we didn't finish. And oh. I want to talk about it real quick. What is it? Can we talk about it? Do you want to talk about Gears? Gears of War. So, okay, we're just going to really quick, like th under three minutes. We decided to play Gears of War Ultimate Edition. That was like, 
that was a game that we were going to play online before I decided to come out here. I was like, okay, I will buy this and I will play Gears of War with you. You've played the first Gears, right? Yes. Um, well, no. Oh, no, you played through Ultimate. I've That's played right. through Ultimate. I ne- I've never played through Gears. I actually, at some point, I still sort of want to see if we can try to beat it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be opposed to playing through Gears of War again right now. I've still got some replays I can do. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so we started up uh, Ultimate Edition. This was your first experience this is with my, Ultimate this Edition. This is the first time I've played Ultimate Edition. I remember Gears of War. I played it last year as this like groundbreakingly gorgeous, gritty, like intense game on 360. And I still believe that to be true. Um, Gears of War Ultimate Edition is like they took that and they just like... I don't even know what they did. The game is hideous. It just looks terrible. It's embarrassing how badly they butchered the the, the art in this game. The characters look like cartoon characters. <laughs> the the original I mean, this is an example of better graphics don't always like improve a game uh, in term in the in the visual department. And I feel the same way about Halo Combat Evolved. We I, mean, I didn't mention this, but sometimes if you start adding all these textures and adding all these particle effects, it just gets too busy. And Gears of and Halo suffered from that, and that's why we played on the original Xbox setting. And Gears of War Ultimate suffers from that, but you can't switch back to the original Gears in, in Gears of War Ultimate Edition. And it's interesting that you said that because after we played that a little bit, we did play a tiny bit of the original Gears. Just of to War. see what it was like and what it, Yeah, well, just to see what it was like. To make sure that I wasn't wrong in my original impression. And in this case, it was my first time experiencing the original Gears of War right. because I had it took a while for me to get the download code for for it yeah. from Microsoft, um, and I actually had to do- download it and install it, and we can talk about that later. But even I, it was just the original Gears of War to me looked better, and that's that should not happen. This it is was, a ten year old game now. It was significantly darker. Uh, so whatever lighting solution they decided to go with with the Ultimate Edition, maybe that was a problem. I mean, it can't be just the lighting, can it? But, I mean, lighting changes a lot, but I don't think that was the issue. But I yeah, think, it was just it was darker. Like the blood, the way that shot up was. I love the blood effects in the first Gears of War, and it was like totally. I, I, I like didn't even notice the blood in Gears of War Ultimate. It was Edition. totally neutered. It was just it was embarrassing, and I'm not I'm not saying that like a game needs to look great to be great because Gears of War is still a great game, but. It was just, it was bizarre to me to, to load up this supposedly more technologically advanced version of the game and just be like, well, this looks worse immediately. That yeah. was the first thing I said, like, what's wrong with their faces? <laughs> <laughs> that was actually, yeah, the first thing you said. And, yeah. And the whole time you were just like, this doesn't even look like a new system. No, it looked like, honestly, it looked like what I would expect from the Xbox 360. Like, if you swapped them, I would have been like, oh, yeah, that's Ultimate Edition. If I had never played them before and i just like seen screenshots side by side like oh yeah that's the one that's uh, on xbox one it is amazing that yeah so and and again i, I bring back i bring up halo master chief or the master chief collection because it has the the combat evolved on it um the sorry the hd remaster of combat evolved and it was just it was too busy and we just were we played on the original xbox setting and it's just sometimes a little simpler is a little better and Maybe not everyone agrees with me on that, but I, that's just how I felt playing those games. I, I liked the original better. All right. Well, before we go, we did forget one thing. What is your score for Halo Combat oh, yeah, yeah, Evolved? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I'm gonna give Halo a five. I don't know if you saw that coming or not, but I did. I it's it's just it's an excellent game. It's just put together so well. The it, pacing is incredible. I can't remember the last time I binged a game as long as we binged Halo. That uh, I think it was the second day. That we were playing that we just like played for six hours straight and finished and i was like man where did that time go it was a, a total blast yeah. from the beginning to end and for me it's still a five out of five i i reviewed it last or last 52 out of 52 yep so i mean it hasn't been that long since i played it and my replays are racking up this year you've got a lot of replays but you know what you're almost done with 52 52 anyway we believe it or not we have a lot more games to talk about in the next part of the show so we sure do so stick around um well, the show will get posted in the next couple days and then uh, you can play oregon trail in the meantime or halo or whatever uh and thank you for listening everybody uh i'm spiegel he's Piddle. we'll see you again in a while